Alright, what's up guys? How you doing? So to <laughs> Yo, okay, let's get it. Okay, let's get it. What's up, guys? How you doing? In this video, we're gonna talk about five tips to ace your type reading, aircraft type reading, whether it's Boeing or Airbus. So I wanna make this video not to teach you how to do your aircraft type reading, because that's what this training center is there for. I just wanna make this video to basically make it easier for you, faster and more efficient. So like I said, it's gonna be divided in five different parts. So first of all, I wanna talk about CBTs. CBTs are computer-based training for the, um, for the type reading. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be sent the whole um, the whole website with the CBTs and modules you need to do. So what's gonna happen is basically to be able to like your 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 type reading is divided into two segments. It's divided into basically the parts leading up to the theoretical exam, and secondly, it's, it's um, the part for the actual line skill test. So the CBTs are there for you to be able to pass the theoretical exam, but for you to be actually to actually sit the exam, you need to have finished every module of the CBT, every single one. You need to have passed this, uh, every module and passed all exams in these in these modules. So what's going to happen is, if you really want to make it easier for you, you can ask your um, you can ask your training center to send it to you early. So most likely they'll send it to you maybe like a week or two weeks in advance. So that's ideal. But some people that I know didn't receive what they needed to receive in time, and they had to do the CBTs during their training. So, yeah, so you can call them up, you can email them, like emailing is probably easier, and you can get it like two or three weeks before, and make sure you finish it and understand what's, what's, uh, what, what, is, what's this, what the subject matter is, basically. And when that's done, you should take notes of every single module, like of everything that's hard, like you think is hard for you, and everything you think might, might come back again, you know? So it's gonna free up your time a lot, and it's gonna allow you to focus on other things you're doing when you're there. For example, when I was when I did my uh, my type reading, my type reading, which lasted about two months, the fact that I completed my uh, CBTs beforehand like freed up my time to be able to just focus on maybe school bangs that I had there and like focusing on things I was learning concerning the CBTs and stuff like that. So that's always uh, that's. Always um. Like I said, it's divided into two parts. So you have the part again leading up to the exam and you have the part leading up to the line skill test. But you need to remember that the whole point of a type reading is for you to be able to fly the aircraft, for you to be able to pass the line skill test. That's pretty much the, the objective of the whole thing. Like if you could go into a training center and do the line skill test on that day and get the type reading on that day, that's what it would be. But that's not how it is because you need the time to be able to learn the knowledge that is required so what I what I um, suggest that you do is like from the first day you get there is shared time between studying the theoretical knowledge from the banks or whatever it is that you got and actual actually like learning the flows the call outs and the emergencies from your QRH from the checklist and from whatever it is that your your instructors basically teach you yeah so yeah so the type reading goes really fast. It's usually six to eight weeks. Something is always like, there's always something new every day. And by the time you finish the theoretical part, you want to be already up to speed with all the basics when it comes to uh, all the SOPs, all the flows and everything that has to do with the cockpit and starting up and basically like the base, you know, basically. So if you don't, like, if you don't know things, like if you don't know these things, by the time you get into the sim, by the time you get into the important CPTs, it will slow down your learning process a lot if you don't have these these basics already down, like if you don't have them already nailed, you know what I mean? All right, so number three now. 
get a question bank for your aircraft online on top of the bank you, the, your training center will provide you. So it's going to give you a better overall understanding of your aircraft because it's, it's, it's more knowledge and it's, it's better to have more than less. It's going to give you different questions that will help you for the exam that will help you understand exactly like how the aircraft works and how every system works, when it, whether it comes to hydraulic systems, whether it comes to fuel systems, pneumatic systems or whatever. It will help you see it in a different frame because the way the, way the questions are asked uh, from the school bank is always like the same type of questions, but like the way you'll get it from an online bank, it will make you understand it better, if that makes sense. So when you get close to the exam, the exam date, like I, I suggest like to start focusing more on the bank that you've already got, like the bank that you've got from the school, because that's that's the closest like that is gonna be from the actual exam. So you want that, you want these kind of these types of information to be fresh in your head by that time. All right, now number four. Have quick summary sheets for memory items and emergencies. So, why? What's the relevance of having the, like a quick summary sheet? Is that you want to be efficient and you want to be motivated when you do your stuff. You don't want to always have to go back to your FCOM. You don't want to always have to go back to your QRH. You don't want to always go back to your FCTM to look for information like in thousands of pages. Okay, let's say today you have uh, you know that you're gonna need um, to know. What, like for example, an emergency an emergency descent. You know, you need to know the procedure for an emergency descent. You need to know the procedure for an engine failure after takeoff. You need to know the, um, the procedure for an um, engine failure during cruise, right? So, you go to the FCTM. You follow the the orders of what PM says, what PF says, and you, you understand it. When that's done, you just take a little piece of paper. You write, let's say, like you write on top of the paper what procedure you're talking about and you write the important points so that you don't need to go back to your FCTM again. Let's say you're gonna have this same session in 30 minutes, you're sitting down maybe at the cafeteria or whatever, at the training center, you take out the sheet, you just read it, go through the memory items like one last time, and it's, it's, it's super efficient. You don't have to pull out the iPad all the time, you don't have to pull out like the big books all the time, you know, it's just it's just more cost effective and like, it's just, it's just better. So, yeah, basically bullet points for flows that you usually forget like you can make yeah you can make like a little sheet for that and bring it with you until you remember it and things like that man that's just that's just a little tip that's just something that i use when i was there okay now number five practice using the quick reference handbook um before before the actual sim before you start sims why am i saying this is because sometimes when you'll be in flight you'll need to be able to look up information for uh, a certain type of failure that occurs like in the abnormal uh, emergency section of the QRH. Sometimes you'll need to check OEB, sometimes you'll need to uh, do some calculations when it comes to landing distance. Let's say you're overweight, or let's say you have a certain minor failure that changes the landing distance of your aircraft. You need to be able to find these uh, tables, you need to be able to find, find graphs, know how to do the calculations for the results you're looking for. So you don't want to be learning this during the flight. You don't want to be doing. To, you, don't, you don't want to be learning this while you're actually flying, while, while you're talking to somebody, while you have ATC and all these things. You want, you want, basically, to already know where to find the information and how to interpret it. So when you have free time, like whether you're at the center or whether you're back at your apartment or whatever, you just pull out your QR, QRH, you go through a random failure, and you try to do all the calculations for that specific failure. And that's it. Like until you remember it, it's it's just, it's just it, it makes the whole thing more efficient. Like I said, four hours is not that long considering only two of these hours in the sim is are as you flying as a uh, as PF. So it's pretty it's pretty smart to do it that way. Okay, now a bonus that I have for you is just uh, four bullet points quickly towards the last half of the sims. You need to always be ready for all types of emergencies, especially rejected takeoff, engine failure at takeoff, and uh, for the crews, always be ready for a TCAS because they want to see like your reaction to that. You, they want to see your colors. They want to see uh, if you do the right sequence of actions to avoid the other aircraft. If you do the right sequence of action, if ATC starts trying to um, basically talk to you and give you information while you're trying to avoid the other aircraft and stuff like that. Okay, you also want to be aware of engine failures and emergency descents. So these three in cruise are the most likely. TCAS, engine failure, emergency descent. During takeoff, RTO, engine failure. At takeoff, of course. 
So when approaching landing, always be ready. Always be ready for a go around, whether it's caused by wind shear or, or maybe there's a collapsed landing gear playing on the on the runway. Whether there's something that's obstructing the runway, you want to always be ready to go around because that's what they do in the sims. That's, there's always something. Maybe you just can't see the runway below the minimum, so you just go around. They want to see CRM, they want to see uh, crew resource management. So you must be able to talk all the time with your uh, other crew member. You must always come up with a solution together. You must go through the ECAM actions together, go through the, um, the last page of the um, ECAM together, um, ask, for example, for pending checklists, ask for any system resets, engine relight if it's applicable, and just basically go through the four deck, which stands for facts, options, risks decision execution and cross check when that's done you'll communicate your decision with atc after of course you've talked with each other you've talked to uh, your cabin and maybe made an, an announcement for the passengers and uh yes yeah, that's that's something that the, the instructors like to see during a sim like when you're um, when you're managing in a failure basically so yeah it's good to have good communications with your partner studying together will make it a lot easier especially when it comes to flows and in the mock-up and sops and calls because it's always better to have somebody else working with you and filling in the gaps like when you're trying to like when, when you're addressing something he has to reply when you're going through a checklist he's replying to whatever you're calling and so on so it's just it's complementing basically it's uh you, it, it complements everything when it comes to knowledge whether it comes to actual flights or whatever so Good chemistry with your partner is always good. So, thank you for watching the video. It's your boy, Fly JV. I'm out. So, like I said, it's going to be divided into five different parts. <laughs> I got it, I got it, I'm sorry. <laughs>